Welcome to the Third Wave Business Systems Advanced Productivity Pack Customizer Module Feature Overview. My name is Dennis Tucker. I'm a technical manager at Third Wave, and I'll be providing you with some insight today into the functionality available in this module to customize your SAP Business One environment. Customizer is composed of four main features. Item placement allows you to add new controls, move existing controls, or pull user-defined fields into the main SAP screens. The Process Rules Engine provides you with the ability to add robust validations or functionality behind forms and controls in an easy-to-use way. Mandatory Fields Placement allows you to designate requirements on fields being completed before allowing functionality to continue. The Tab Order Sequencing feature allows users to designate the priority of fields on a screen. We will be reviewing each of these features in greater detail and will also be examining hands-on how-to demonstrations as well. Item Placement. As mentioned earlier, this feature deals with adding new controls to screens, altering existing controls on screens, and incorporating user-defined fields onto main SAP screens to reduce the need to view the user-defined field side panel. New controls that can be added to an SAP screen include buttons, labels, text boxes, and tabs. One important thing to remember is that anything that you're seeing in this demonstration video can be done on base SAP screens as well as on screens created in SAP by third-party add-on applications utilizing the SAP User Interface API. In addition to simply adding or updating controls on a form, you can also leverage the Process Rules Engine to add robust, easy-to-use functionality to those controls to make them more usable to your needs. The Process Rules, as I mentioned earlier, enables you to specify robust functionality behind a control. A validation, for example, could be added to verify that a user has entered a specific type of value in a field before being allowed to leave that field. Define the steps to be taken once a button has been clicked to launch several other screens. The Process Rules module includes a feature called Macro Recording which enables the user to simply perform the steps to be taken in SAP Business One as an example of the needed functionality, recording those steps so that they can be repeated on command. This streamlines the process of creating some of the rules to be associated with these controls. The Process Rules module is remarkably customizable and configurable to meet a variety of requirements for the client. Mandatory fields are a crucial feature in the Customizer module. This process allows you to enforce data integrity by specifying fields that the user must complete before processing. If the user does not enter a value in the field required as mandatory, they will be notified via a status bar message. The mandatory fields can also be assigned different background colors so that it's visually obvious to the user which fields are required. The feature can be set at the user, department, or branch level. The severity of the impact of the requirement can be set ranging from a simple warning message to a stop action impact preventing the user from proceeding without the mandatory fields completed. Tab sequencing enables you to streamline the user's data entry experience by allowing for the customization of which fields to access first. Now that we've discussed the wide variety of possibilities that can be achieved with the APP Customizer module features, we're going to look at some hands-on demonstrations of how they can be accomplished. The first topic we'll look at is how to incorporate SAP user-defined fields into the main SAP screens. User-defined fields are typically only accessible through the UDF side panel. However, there are situations in which it would be more beneficial to the user to have that information readily available on the main areas of the screen. In this example, using the Business Partner Master Data screen, I'm going to move two user-defined fields onto the main screen. The first user-defined field is for our ShipEasy application, the ShipLink account number, which I'll move to a position on the General tab below the Business Partner Type field. The second user-defined field is for our EFT application, the EFT account type, which is a drop-down field, and I'll move that to a position under the territory field also on the general tab. 
To reference the business partner type field for placing my ShipLink account number, I'll right click while on the field. Select the APP Customizer menu option, then the User Defined Field menu, and then select the ShipLink account number user field I want to place. The Item Placement Options screen will appear and the information for the Business Partner Type field will be placed in the Reference Control ID field. I can now click one of the position buttons, left, right, above, or below, for where I want the User Defined field located in relation to the selected reference control. I'll select below and click the OK button. You can see that the user defined field is now available on the main screen. We'll repeat the process to place the EFT account type user field. I'll right click while on the territory field, select the APP customizer menu, then the user defined field menu, and then select the EFT account type user field. The item placement options screen will appear again and the information for the territory field will be visible in the reference control ID field. I'll select below and click the OK button. The EFT account type field is now positioned below the territory field on the main screen. At this point the user defined field side panel can be closed as the UDFs can be viewed and updated through the fields on the main screen. Any updated values will be reflected also in the fields on the side panel. The next topic we'll look at is using the item placement feature to manipulate existing SAP screen controls. In this example we will be using the activity screen and I'm going to demonstrate a customization that we routinely use at our clients that really streamlines the usability of the activity screen. As you can see here, the basic activity screen has four tabs, general, content, linked documents, and attachments. The modification that I'm going to make is to move the large text field from the content tab to the general tab underneath the recurrence field. Removing that field will leave no fields on the content tab, so there's no need for the tab to be visible, so we will make it invisible. To accomplish this, right click while on the extended text field. Select the APP Customizer menu option, then the Control Properties menu option. This will load the Item Property and Events screen. The data on this screen represents the text box that we want to move. Click on the Item Placement Options button to load the same placement form we saw in our previous example. The easiest way to obtain a reference control is to click on the ellipsis button next to the field. Then click on the control on the screen to be used as the reference. In this case, the recurrence label on the general tab. The object value is returned to the reference control ID field. If you already know the value, which is available in system information, it can be manually typed into the field as well. The next step is, again, to click the button for the desired relative position, in this case below, and click the OK button. Click the Apply and Close button on the Item Properties and Events screen. The results are immediately visible that the text field has been moved from the Content tab to the General tab in our selected location. To make the Content tab invisible, right click while on the tab itself. Select the APP Customizer menu option, then the Control Properties menu option. When the Item Properties and Events screen loads for the tab object, Deselect the visible checkbox under the behavior area and click the apply and close button. The content tab will now have been removed from view. In just a few minutes, we've customized the look and feel of the activity screen. We've received positive feedback from our clients, enhancing their experience with this screen while removing a few clicks needed to complete it. The next feature that we're going to demonstrate is the macro recording which introduces some amazing functionality, allowing you to record and reuse a process in SAP without writing any commands. Simply perform the actions to be taken in the system, and APP records and converts it into commands for you. For this demonstration, we will be using the Business Partner Master Data screen and a launch service call button. 
When the button is clicked, the actions that will be taken include opening a new service call screen, transferring the business partner card code to the new screen, transferring the federal tax ID field value to the subject of the new service call, and then opening an activity screen. As you can see, all of the actions we outlined are accomplished with the simple click of just one button. Now we'll take a look at the steps required to create this macro recording. The first step is to create the button on the form. We'll create a new button below the email via Outlook button. Right click on the button, select the APP customizer menu option, then the new item menu and the button option. The item placement option screen will load, select the bottom position and click the OK button. The new button will be placed on the form and the item properties and events screen will load so that I can customize the properties of my new control. I can change a variety of properties about my button, including the caption, height and width, top and left positioning, and which users the button is available to. Once I click the apply button, the changes will take effect on the screen. Now I've created my physical button but I have no functionality behind it when the button is clicked. To create that functionality, click on the Events tab. Select the Define button on the line for the button click event, which loads the event handler screen. Define a new procedure under the No Validation section in this case. Assign the new procedure a name. At this point, we could just load the macro editor and enter the commands manually through the Excel-like interface. Examples are available in our user guide. But in this example, we're going to use the recording capability. Start the process by clicking the record button. The first steps for my macro are to copy the business partner card code and the federal tax ID number for our new service call. In each case, I'm using the copy item function from the APP customizer right click menu. Launch the service call window now I'm ready to paste my copied fields onto the service call screen. To paste a copied field on the service call, right click on the target field, select the APP customizer menu option, then the paste item menu option for the value to be placed in the target field. First card code, then the federal tax ID number. Once these values have been pasted into place, I can click the activity tab and then the activity button on the service call screen to launch the activity screen. Now that my process is complete, I can go back to the APP procedure handler screen via the taskbar and click the stop button on the macro tab. Click the OK button and then apply and close buttons until we're back to the service call screen. Close the service call screen and we can now click on our new button on the business partner screen to run our newly recorded macro. There you go. It's just that simple. It's very easy to create robust functionality in a matter of a few minutes without any in-depth programming knowledge. Just basic knowledge of the processes of SAP. It's also easy to go into recorder procedures and adjust them through our macro editor. Now we'll take a look at the mandatory fields feature giving you the opportunity to place data requirements on fields to do as little as give a warning to the user or as much as stop your SAP functionality. For this example, we'll be using the item master data screen, which inherently in SAP only requires that the item code be completed. Right click on the form, select the APP customizer menu option, then the mandatory fields menu, Set Mandatory Fields option. APP will prompt you to let you know that you can click on whichever fields you would like to set as mandatory fields on the form. Select the fields that you would like to be required. In this case, we'll be selecting the item code, item description, and additional identifier fields. You'll notice that APP is visually marking the fields on the screen as you select them to help you identify which fields you've picked and which still need to be determined. Once you've completed all fields, you can go back into the APP Customizer menu, Mandatory Fields, 
and set mandatory fields done option to complete the selection process. The mandatory fields configuration screen will list all the fields you selected, allowing you to remove them if you would wish, to determine whether you can set this for specific users, either by user, branch, or department, determine which mode this is going to be in, either add, update, or both, set a background color for your mandatory fields, and also a warning only checkbox will allow you to designate that the user will only be warned and not prevented from continuing their actions. For this example, we'll leave that warning box unchecked, so any failure to complete the required fields will result in the stopping of the adding of the item code. Click the OK button on the mandatory fields configuration screen to save your settings, close and reload your item master data form, and start to enter a brand new item code. Leave one or more of the required fields blank and try to add the item into the system. You'll be prompted on the SAP status bar as to which of the mandatory fields are missing. Complete the missing data and then re-add the item into the system. The item will be added successfully. The last feature that we'll be demonstrating today is the tab order sequence feature, which allows you to streamline the workflow by prioritizing the fields for data entry. For the tab order demonstration, we'll be using the Employee Master Data screen. A normal SAP tab order functionality would start in the first name field, then it moves on to middle name, then it moves on to the last name, and progresses through the other fields on the screen. For our purposes, I want to prioritize the following fields. First name, last name, email address, mobile phone, an office phone. To set the tab order, I'll access the APP Customizer right-click menu from the first name field, go to the tab order submenu, and select the set tab sequence option. I'll select the fields in the order in which I want them to be set in the tab order. As I select each field, it'll change colors as APP marks that it's been added to the tab order. To complete the tab order sequence setting, I'll once again access the APP Customizer right-click menu, Tab Order, and then Set Tab Order Done option. This will bring up the Tab Order Settings configuration screen, where I can edit my tab order or set it for use for specific users by employee, department, or branch. Once I've done all my editing, I can click OK reload my form and then as I'm entering data my APP tab order sequencing will take priority. Once I've completed the fields in my tab order sequencing the screen will then revert to the original SAP tab order. For more information on Third Wave's Advanced Productivity Pack Customizer Module, the Advanced Productivity Pack or any of the other applications that Third Wave offers, please visit our website at www.twbs.com. You can click the Contact Us link in the upper right corner of the page. Existing Third Wave partners and customers can obtain more information through the support portal by clicking the Customer Support link in the upper right corner of the page. Thank you for your time and attention.